All right, this is the third video of the month of January's Lost Gold. And oh, this video is almost like a shadow ripple of last week's, which is of the Nicholas Brothers. Uh, link in the description. It, I love that piece of history. And speaking of a piece of history, we're getting into this one. Because this talks, we're going over a subject that not that many people are too loud about. More than that, not really mentioned. But it's a, we're going to go over some lost history with this lost gold. And the pond is going to show you. So cue the music and get ready for some history. Hello and welcome to this part of the pond where it's the bullfrog and the one, the only Newt. Face reveal at 100,000 subscribers. We would love the subscribers and you want to see that face. When you wake up and go in the mirror, you go, oh my gosh, my bed hair just looks like good. I don't need the comb. That is hair I envy. And that's a face that can get away with it. That is envy, people. That is that face. And again, we want the subscribers. Third video of Lost Gold. Last week, we gave you a piece of history, a shout out of the Nicholas Brothers. And this one, we want to go more about a certain piece of history and a certain video that I feel like has gone too far under the radar. That we're going to try our best to raise it up even more. Because Nicholas Brothers, I kind of found out after that video, are not as lost as I realized. <laughs> Here in the pond, we, have to, we do admit mistakes. I didn't know there were that many reaction videos of their dance. <laughs> well, I still, does it mean that I shouldn't have done that video? No, because those people were reacting. If they knew the history, I think their jaws would drop even more. So we're giving you another history bit, but it's not, it's, it is a shout out, but more. Because you have to understand a little more what happened, what made this video happen came to be. It was the perfect storm. And the storm begins right here. The Blues Brothers. It came out early 80s, I'm guessing. I could be wrong. But I think it was around that time. And this movie has big stars, big voices, and a lot of car crashes. It's one of my personal favorites. I highly recommend to watch. This movie restarted or reawakened people to the careers and sounds of Aretha Franklin, Cab Calloway, James Brown, the late, the great, never ain't Ray Charles, <laughs> and the rhythm and sounds of the Blues Brothers, the SNL skit of, <laughs> I keep on wanting to say Elwood, when it's really Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. This SNL skit brought this movie, which helped those careers. And America kind of went, wow, this is good music. Me personally, how come you forgot? Please, this is good music. And it is good music. Music that is just plain awesome. Some perf musical performance that are just good. Some of them are songwriters, Cab Calloway that are just plain great, whose influences still affect some parts of modern culture today. I am not kidding. Cab Calloway is more of an icon than we give him credit for. I almost feel like sometime for the 4th of July to celebrate America, we need to celebrate Cab Calloway. If we have the, if our scheduling is right, we, we may do it. It's not a guarantee, 50-50. But Cab Calloway, I love him. And again, hold on to that name. And while that happened, again, early 80s, I could be wrong, the 1990s happened. And in Rome, three tenors came together. Where it's, I'm going to botch their names, so I'm so sorry. But these guys blew the world up. 
from Placido Domingo, botching his name, Luciano Pavarotti, and the man who is not the other guy, I have your name. I have your name. <laughs> this guy is Jose Curreras, the Spaniard. Maybe bother, 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 botching everyone's name. I'm sorry. But these three tenors got together and sank in Rome in 1990. They didn't get together till 1994 and sang, and these guys blew out of proportion. So opera was big again. I mean, Seinfeld had two or three episodes interact, not really interacting with these guys, but they were there, they were mentioned. One of them was, it was the other guy. I mean, Jose Carreras. He was actually in a Seinfeld episode. So as you can tell in the 90s, Early 2000s, opera was big again. So much so, three tenors from Ireland came in and got in on it. And I missed, and I don't remember their names well. And they're one of my favorite singers. Not tenors, but singers. And Irish tenors did actually sing at the funeral of Gordon B. Hinckley, the prophet of my religion around that time period. So that kind of shows how prolific the Irish tenors were. So you have the big three, the Irish three, and you have the hidden influences of Blues Brothers still holding out. Bullfrog, where are you going to get to the point? And here it is. America, again, is primed and ready. For the man who conspired with this idea, whose name is... I'm vouching everyone's name, so I'm probably going to butcher yours, too. Marion J. Coffey. And he got a countertenor and two others. Their names, Victor Trent Cook, Roderick Dixon, and Thomas Young. And they became three more tenors. And for the first time in cultural history, history in music history, you can hear the lyrics of Cab Calloway being performed on a stage of New York. And given the respect that man had the entire time, he finally, after all of these years, Cab Calloway's music was given the respect people finally realized it needed. But it was more than just Cab Calloway. R&B sounds were put into this stage. On this platform, some of great songs were there. And, and songwriters. And it was after Ray Charles' death, these guys did, another, did a performance honoring him in Chicago. It was another thing, and they did a song... A, Melody to Ray Charles. And here's the thing. There's only two albums they made. And Apple iTunes has one of them. And maybe the lyrics to the other. The songs of the other. And they only made one video. And yet, this is the only piece of piece in American cultural history where you can hear the OJ's love train and here, after it, from Sweeney Todd, nothing's going to harm you not while I'm around. To Nessu Dorme, the opera song. And then have a gospel choir singing Jesus, What a Wonderful Child. Where, before and after, has that happened? Where three Tanners got together by one man, and they sang that. That is amazing. Talk about barriers being torn apart. That's not barriers being torn apart. That is, dang it, I don't know what. Probably a nuclear bomb putting onto the Berlin Wall of Separation, annihilating it, and building up a beautiful park that's zero radiation, and people going... Nessu dorme. And the other guy's going, people of the world, join hands. Yeah, everyone's singing 
start a love train. Love train. OJs, I love their music. But more than that, it happened. We all talk about our dreams, and there's dreams that we personally can do, and there's dreams where it's really outside. Like, some of us dream for Disney to get their act together. Some of us wish that, have a dream that Star Wars can get its act together. That maybe we can actually get some original movies that people will take a risk. Or wish that rhythm and blues and oldies and classic good rock and roll can have the same respect as opera. It's here. It's already been done. And who's not to say it could happen again? Lightning strikes way more than twice, people. It's a piece of cultural history that's gone ignored. If we're talking lost gold, this thing is so lost. But here in the pond, we are polishing up and pulling it out of the dirt saying, it happened. Cab Calloway, Ray Charles, and so many others were given the respect of opera and Broadway. And who's not to s So don't say they don't have respect when respect was here. That gospel choir sang it true. These three achieved a dream I always wanted. And by George, people, listen. Find and look and tell me what you think. Because things are not as built up as a wall as you realize. It's probably eroded down, just forgotten. Because those songwriters, those performers, are just as memorable and even more prominent than others. Am I bashing on opera? No, 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 no. I love me a good opera song. I will always love Da Capo Don Estagdare. I'm butching everything, but where Luciano Pavarotti holds the note longer and Jose and Placidio had to hold that note matching him. I love that. But when these three guys sing, London e Mopole, and one sings it, and then the other adds on, and the other adds on, I just love it just as much as the, three bi as the big three originals. It's just three more tenors. And this is the pawn giving them the shine that they are. And this is gold, baby, lost gold. And until next week's, it's the bullfrog and the newt signing out. What? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> ah,